This is how I healed my hormones naturally. This is a video I've wanted to make for a long time. I've offhandedly mentioned how I used to have endometriosis. Uh, when I was like in my early 20s, my OBGYN told me that I likely would not be able to conceive a baby. I'm currently pregnant with baby number three. I feel like every year I just keep feeling better. So let's get into it. I wanna share with you how I healed my hormones. This is gonna be a jam-packed video, and so I've simplified it into three main points points, but these are big points, so let's just get right into it. The first and most important thing I did to heal my hormones was quit diet culture. I'm going to try my hardest to help you shift your mindset just by watching this video. So let me show you some comparisons. In America, health is typically 100% reductionism. We see like some imbalance and we think, okay, there's some specific food, some specific supplement, some specific medication, and as long as you start taking this one thing, you'll be cured, you'll feel better. Instead of looking at the human body and our health as being more holistic, so herein lies the problem with diet culture. Conventional wisdom would say that the only way to good health is through a diet. The problem with that is that most diets and nutritional studies are tested only on young men. Think of basically any biohack or diet, and I can promise you that most likely it has not been tested on a fertile, let alone pregnant or lactating woman. Ice baths, for instance, have only been tested on men, and the thing is, men and women's bodies could not be more different. And as someone who's very health conscious, I, for years, followed men on the internet, giving me health advice, doing what they do to optimize my health. Even just eating the same thing day after day and not taking into account my cycle, the different phases of my cycle, my fertility, all of this. I'm gonna get into all of that a lot more in my next point, but the most important thing I did was quitting this reductionist idea that the only way to heal my hormones, the only thing that I should look into was my food when in reality, health is incredibly holistic. I've shared about how I visited the original Blue Zone, Sardinia, last year, and my main takeaway from being there was not the diet. In fact, I was trying to ask Sardinians about their food. It's something I was so fascinated by, but as an American leaving Sardinia, the main lesson I feel I learned from there was that health is so much more than food. I've said this before in a video, we have over 50 hormones in our bodies. And the only ones we really ever hear about are estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Cortisol is a huge stress hormone that affects all the other hormones. The thing is, these little tiny hormones, they can affect each other in such strong ways and in just small amounts, they can have really big implications on all the other parts of this holistic puzzle. I just made a podcast about this, about just the ultimate guide to rest for women, and I was talking about how you could eat the most perfect diet in the world and still feel like crap if you're not resting well to support your body as a woman and you're living in a stressful environment where your cortisol is spiked all the time. Studies show that women, even if you're not living in a loud and chaotic environment, we, our bodies and our brains perceive stress from excessive amounts of clutter. So you might be doing everything right, but if your environment is just too much stress on your body, on your hormones, that is going to mess up the delicate cycle of your body. I now realize that my optimal health encompasses so much more than just the food that I buy and that I put on my plate. It's so important, my relationships, the quality of my relationships, my relationship to myself, the amount of stress in my life, maybe the diet that I'm eating is actually causing me a ton of stress. And that was the case in my life. I think it's become such an identity for so many women nowadays. We've lost that very feminine, just romantic relationship with food. I think in Italy, I was able to reconnect with this. They say that Rome is the capital of a city in love with food. And as an American visiting Italy, I was actually kind of irritated at first with how long and how far into the night Italians in every city we were in spend talking 
and just carrying on around a table with food. I left actually with quite a reverence for it, thinking, man, what a bummer that as an American woman, I am hurrying through every meal. I'm whipping up quick dinners, and I'm thinking only of food as fuel. A hormone that doesn't get so much attention is oxytocin. Oxytocin is that feel good love hormone. You have it when you're snuggling or kissing or petting a pet or getting a massage or having intimacy with your spouse. I think you also experience some oxytocin when you romanticize little things in your everyday life. And oxytocin is actually the mother hormone of all the other hormones that I mentioned before. When you can amp up the oxytocin in your life, you can actually kind of overlook some of the other details. You can fudge some of the edges because oxytocin will just go and fill in all the gaps for you and bring about natural healing and regulation of the female body. So the more we can just relax and enjoy and savor, it's all the things I talk about on this channel without actually blatantly talking about it, the more good things you're actually doing for your health and whatever you're eating at your table, our minds are so powerful. And studies actually show that what we believe about the food that we're consuming affects the way our bodies assimilate those nutrients. I'll link a book that talks in a lot more detail and with a lot more scientific proof about this, but it's fascinating if we could just relax about the strictness and the control and just the obsession with this very male dominated idea of diet culture, I think that in and of itself was such a huge step for me in just letting my hormones and my cortisol and my oxytocin heal itself. But let's get into the next point that I think is a lot more practical and specific. The second most important point for me in healing my hormones was learning how to support my cycle, my body as a woman, rather than treating it like a man, like I was talking about before. I'm gonna link a whole bunch of books and resources for you in the description box of this video, so just know that this is gonna be an overview, and I really hope that if this is speaking to you, you'll do more of your own research. So we are obviously not men, yet most of our culture in modern day society is built around a man's circadian rhythm. Male hormones, testosterone primarily, rises in the morning and falls in the afternoon. We are driven not just by circadian rhythm, but also by infradian rhythm, which is a monthly cycle. And ancient cultures realized that this cycle mirrored the moon. As women, we can either fight this truth and feel depleted, or we can embrace it and feel incredible. I will link this book for you in the description. This is just a little graph of the comparison between a man's hormonal cycle happening here and a woman's infradian and circadian cycle happening over a 28 day period here. I used to view my period as just like a gross monthly inconvenience. When I was, I don't know, a teenager, I went on birth control and it was like such a great relief to me along with i know lots of other women around or girls i should say at that age um that went on the pill just because their periods were just like a gross inconvenience the primary thing we were taught is just to be careful and not get pregnant it wasn't about how to actually support our bodies as women and how our periods are actually the greatest indicator of our health that we have access to. It's like the fifth vital sign, if you've never heard of that before. Menstruation is like the main way a female body can indicate what kind of health and what conditions occurred over the course of the last 28 days. If your period is irregular or you haven't had a period in a long time or if it's painful or if it's heavy or light, that is something that needs to be taken very seriously. No matter what advice you've been given about periods in the past, it is completely ridiculous to tell someone to suck it up or that that's just the way it is to have painful irregular periods. As women we have four phases or seasons over a 28 day cycle. It begins with menstruation or our period and that is our inner winter. We need to have a little bit slower pace and inward focus. We need to nourish ourselves with extra fat and protein and calories. We, our bodies actually need a whole lot more calories during this part of our cycle than we will need in the next phase, which I think is fascinating because if you're like me and you've ever just like got some dieting advice, like why don't you try intermittent fasting? And maybe it's great and maybe it'll be great for you, but you try it during your menstrual phase when it is gonna completely wreck your hormones 
and make you feel like garbage, guess what? Nothing's broken about you. You just didn't know how to support your cycle and you weren't aligned with what was going on in your body because your body's not a man. Men can try out little things like that any time of the month, but a woman is going to feel like garbage if she doesn't nourish herself with the right things and sync up her life and her you know, commitments, even your work schedule, if you're doing things that are going to really deplete you, then you're going to really mess up your hormones. The second phase is the follicular phase. It's our inner spring. We have a lot more outward focus and energy during this season. It's a good time to take action, to set goals, to embrace a little more like discipline and structure and some of that healthy masculine energy, even like fun competitions with yourself for getting things done, productivity. During this phase, our bodies need different types of food. We need to focus on lots, abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables and sprouted foods containing lots of micronutrients, fermented foods, and even cardio might feel good during this season of your cycle. The third phase is the ovulatory phase or the our inner summer. This is like the peak of your energy as a woman. You will feel unbelievable thanks to a little bit of extra testosterone in your body, which will make you more attracted to your spouse. And studies even show that women appear more attractive to other men. It's not just a feeling. You actually do look more attractive. Pheromones or whatever is on your body actually smell more attractive. It's so sad to me thinking back on like all the years I spent on birth control where I wasn't ovulating to think that like, man, I just got rid of my superpower as a woman my ovulation, when all my hormones are doing all the right things for me to like get whatever I want in my life. It is the best time to chase your dreams. It's a good time for making new friends, communicating, socializing, even like staying up late and focusing on lots of like juicy, fresh food. The fourth and final phase is our luteal phase or our inner fall. This is when things start to slow down again. It's a good time for self-reflection, for turning inward. Since progesterone starts to rise, we start to feel all nesty and like we wanna just snuggle up on the couch with like a big bowl of soup. You'll feel like you have more emotional needs. You'll feel heightened intuition. A big thing during this part of our cycle is just like attracting rather than chasing. During this phase to optimize hormones, you focus on root vegetables, warming foods, lots of healthy fiber, grains to kind of flush out all that excess estrogen, more strength training rather than cardio, and just kind of like finishing up loose ends on your to-do list so that you can enter your season of rest. Now, I realize that if you're watching this video, you may not have a regular period. So I want to speak to that because I've been there too. I think a good place to start with this is actually just start learning about the moon. I know that might sound super weird to you at first, but as women, I think our bodies are really connected to nature. So the more time you can spend outside and even just like learning about the cyclical seasons, the way things change in nature, I think that by syncing with the 28 day cycle of the moon and starting to learn and give your body this ebb and flow of nutrients that it needs during these different cycles, I think that that is a really powerful place to start. I know that's where I started and then sure enough, my cycles started becoming regular and I didn't have painful periods anymore and I didn't have acne anymore. I stopped losing my hair, my hair stopped turning gray, all these things just kind of effortlessly fell back into flow, and it's a beautiful thing. The third and maybe most important thing that I did to optimize and balance my hormones again naturally was just to reduce stress. I want to leave you with like a few very practical things you can do. Sometimes I think the world that we are steeped in is just so chaotic. And it's gone so crazy that sometimes it's just nice to hear another woman talk about ways in which she's given herself permission to opt out. I know that it can be scary to do things different and to not just be go, go, go on repeat every day to start living your life in this more feminine way, in this way that supports your body as a woman and not just like a smaller, less hairy man. So the first thing I did to reduce stress, and I talk about it all the time on my channel, but it was to reduce the inventory of physical things in my home. And by that, I mean declutter. 
doing a massive declutter, especially during your luteal phase, is going to feel really good. It'll provide that space to rest during your menstrual phase. And then during your follicular phase, I feel like it'll just feel like a fresh start. Doesn't a clean home in the spring always feel good? I think that decluttering for me, reducing the physical amount of stuff in my space, it affects me very much. I think maybe I'm a little more sensitive to it than even other women, but reducing my physical stuff really reduces my cortisol. It helps me just enjoy and romanticize my life more, which I think in turn helps me optimize and experience more oxytocin which helps me optimize all my hormones effortlessly every day. The second way that I reduce stress is by giving my body regular wake and sleep time. So this is gonna be a whole thing that I talk about in the upcoming retreat. If you haven't heard about it, I am hosting my first ever women's retreat, the Well-Rested Women's Retreat. It's gonna be in Santa Barbara and I will leave more information about it in the description box below. There's so much that goes into optimizing sleep in our modern world. A really basic way to start is just to decide on a time that you're going to go to bed every day and give your body that safety of like, okay, I'm going to honor, I'm going to start honoring my bedtimes. Rest is the central piece to all good health. I read recently that every single disease or disorder is correlated with lack of of sleep. Getting more regular rest is such an important way to allow our bodies to heal and bring down stress. The third and final really practical way that I reduce stress in my everyday life is just getting more time outside. Letting more natural light into my house, opening up doors and windows is a really small thing that I do to kind of let the outside in, but also just prioritizing having less on my schedule so that I can spend more time with my kids outside optimizing my health in just a very effortless way. I feel like there's so much noise out there in the parenting world and about all the things you need to do and all the health hacks and all this stuff. But for me, at the end of the day, prioritizing spending time in nature with my kids every day has been such a powerful way for me to reduce stress. That natural light therapy is proven to really affect our hormones and our mental health. One last thing I want to mention, this is just my favorite cookbook about optimizing my hormones. It's called the Moon Cycle Cookbook. I think I've made just about every single recipe in here. It breaks down all the different phases and then gives you recipes to cook for each um, season of your cycle. She even includes like little rituals too that you can just do for self-care during each. Okay guys, I hope that this video leaves you feeling so encouraged and hopeful about your health, it might not be you that's so broken, you know? Maybe you just never learned how to support your body as a woman. So I hope that this was an empowering video and I wanna hear all about your experience with diet culture, with trying out different health hacks and with optimizing your hormones in the comments below. I will leave all the information about my retreat in the description box below. Okay guys, I'll see you in my next video.